Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and the real scriptures. Job. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Eschewed evil, turn away, turning away from evil. Okay? And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. <laughs> His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. <clears throat> Job had a lot of stuff. And what does it say here? Job was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Let's continue. Now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Satan has to report to the Lord until he finally gets booted out. Okay? And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, <clears throat> Hast thou considered my servant Job? Get a load of this. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. You know, we of the church of the living God, once we are resurrected, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. It is in, it ought to be the desire of every one of us of the church of the living God to get up there at the judgment seat of Christ and to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear that. What about you? That's what we hope to hear as the church of the living God. Looking at verse 8, this is the Lord's testimony of Job. The Lord God himself, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of Job, says, of Job, Hast thou considered my son? Uh, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth. Coming from the Lord about Job. A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and is with evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house? And about all that he hath on every side. <laughs> Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increased in the land. But. Put forth thine hand now. And touch all that he hath. And he will curse thee to thy face. <clears throat> there are so many out there today right now. Brethren, Church of the Living God, those who call themselves Christians, okay? Even today, with all this nonsense, things are going good for them. 
They got all the stuff that they could need. They're not in trouble like other men. Because they see with their eyes, look what I have. Amidst all this stuff. And yes, our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ can bless us like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Satan's accusation is he's only that way because you have blessed him. You have given him all that he needs and then some. He loves you just because of what you have given him. Because you have blessed him and prospered him. That's the accusation. Okay? Verse 11, But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Okay? Hold your place here. Hold your place here and go to the book of John. <clears throat> go to the book of John. Uh, uh, hold on one second. Got to pause it. Sorry about that. I get, uh, it's John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Um, after he had done all the, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ had done all these things unto the children, uh, for the children of Israel, here in John chapter 6, verses 26 on to... Verse 29, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that, which, for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Now these guys were following Jesus, not because of the miracles, but because he gave them what they needed. Hence, the accusation of Satan back in Job here, because Satan was saying, well, of course, Job fears you, is going to love you and eschew evil, because look at what you have given him. Right? Verse 11 in Job chapter 1. But put, now, put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. <clears throat> okay? A lot of those who call themselves Christians today, okay, Christians, yeah, are they going to the Lord out of sorrow, contrition, brokenness? Or just because they have all these false prophets and all these Christians telling them, God loves you. God wants to bless you. He's got a plan for your life. And he does. But see, when they say it, they're talking about the stuff. See Let's continue here in Job chapter 1. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself, but not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. In order for Satan to afflict one of his, of the church of the living God, Satan needs permission to afflict those of us of the church of the living God. Okay? He needs permission from the Lord. For those of us who are of his bones and of his flesh, he's got to get permission from the Lord. See, nothing happens without the Lord say so or without him knowing about it. Okay? You have to remember that. Okay? And if Satan is being allowed to do this, to do something onto you, maybe then it's time you get into prayer and search the scriptures and figure out why. Instead of being 
at Damick and saying, oh, it's him, or it's her, or it's this, or it's the government. Okay? Let's continue. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. 3. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, <clears throat> there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Four things, one, two, three, four, in succession, happened on Job. And Job, from the testimony of, of our Lord himself, verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and sheweth evil? And in succession, from verses 13 on to verse 19. One, two, three, four. Everything was taken away. What's going on out there? Today, with all this COVID nonsense. They're taking away your job, your securities, right? Right? Soon your ability to get food, one of them taking away your freedom, right? Taking all these things away from us. And how many Christians, Christians, are there to praise the Lord because everything is going good for them? In Job chapter 1, Verses 9 on to verse 11. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But <clears throat> put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. How many of you out there only love the Lord because of what he gives you. Stuff. How many of you out there are love the Lord because even in all this nonsense, everything just going great, right? What happens if and when you lose everything? Everything. Like Job. One, two, three, four. Boom. Everything was taken from him. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Want to see what Job did? Want to see what Job did? Verses 20 under verse 22. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. How many of us would be able to do that? Hmm? Because, brethren, you, 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 you're paying attention to uh, what's going on right nowadays, right? That rug can be taken out right from under you. <clears throat> and I know that there are those of you who call yourselves Christians and not of the church of the living God. We're so quick to boast about your possessions, to boast yourself through the Lord, not the Lord through you. I'm this because he's given me this. And yeah, what happens when they break the banks, huh? When our economy collapses, there's some of you out there calling yourselves Christians. When your millions of dollars that you boast about in your banks, in Swiss, right? What's going to happen when you lose it, huh? Oh, I can just see it. You'd be like, oh, 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 everything that I have and everything that I have. Hmm? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Now, uh, there were some in the one previous video, the um, um, Sanctify the Lord God in Thy Heart uh, video that I did, that were like, ah, you know, thanks for this warning, Brad. Hopefully this doesn't come that quickly. And I hope you're right. But the inevitability is, brethren, the inevitability. It's coming whether we like it or not. Philippians. Go to Philippians. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. <clears throat> beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I, check this out, with what we just read in Job. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of faith, which is of God by faith, excuse me, <clears throat> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. <clears throat> it's healthy for us, as the Church of the Living God, to remember from whence we came, from what our Lord saved us out of. 
but to dwell in that. To live back there in things that happened before, before you were saved. Very dangerous. Most unhealthy for you. Verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. That's why you need to examine yourselves in the light of Scripture. So he can reveal to you what's wrong with you. See? And we know of Job that the Lord himself said he was a perfect and upright man. Right? Remember? Mm -hmm. But see, Paul counted all things as dumb. Everything. His pedigree, what he could have become, his standing, considered it all loss for Christ. Nevertheless, whereto we have already tamed, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, <clears throat> and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Okay? And also, too, here in uh, Philippians chapter 4, <clears throat> Let's read verses 11 under verse 14 in Philippians chapter 4. Very familiar verses unto you. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So, in the losing of all things, how are you going to react if that comes to pass? Are you going to be more sorry for what he has taken away? Or allowed to be taken away? And be as Job? As Paul? Hmm? You do realize that your life doesn't consist of the stuff that's around you, right? Hi. You do realize that. But when the rubber hits the road, how clingy are you going to be to that which your eyes behold? How clingy are you going to be onto it? Now, <clears throat> go to Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, 
a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Again, the testimony of our Lord of Job. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. To destroy him without cause. And look at Satan's reaction and what he says. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea. All that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. The accusation. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me take everything away from him. But yet, see, at the end of the day, he's all about himself anyway, because he's still okay. Yeah, you took everything away from him. Oh, he was he he was sorrowful for it. He didn't, yeah, he didn't say anything against you. Well, let me touch his bone and his flesh. Let me afflict him personally. We'll see how loyal, how loving, how um, steadfast he is unto you. Let's see. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand. Save his life. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all, and sat down among the ashes. Then said, <laughs> I love this. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Hold your place there. Hold your place there. <clears throat> Oh, no, one second, got to uh, pause this again. Got to find this. Job chapter 13. <clears throat> Job chapter 13, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Though he slay me, Job 13, verse 15, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Go back to Job chapter 2, verse 10. But he said unto her, after, he, after Satan used his wife to fight against him, <laughs> but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now, when Job's three when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him, and to comfort him. And when they lift up, lifted up their eyes afar off, and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one his mantle, and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Again, Right there, that's a good thing to, to do uh, when a brother or a sister comes to you needing to talk to someone. Uh, sometimes the best thing you can do is keep your mouth shut and just be there for them. Be there in a the presence for them, you know? I know when a beloved brother of mine's um, auntie died um, and we spake on Skype that one day, I just sat there 
you know, listening to him. He even, he even said, he even commented, you know, when someone is going through great suffering, great miseries, sometimes it's best that you just keep your mouth shut. But the point that we're getting at is, <clears throat> Satan went and touched his flesh, his bone and his flesh, and afflicted him. Verses 9 and uh, on to verse 10. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. And when we read in Job 13, verse 15, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Go to 1 Corinthians. Or Second Corinthians, excuse me. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Come on, fingers, work with me. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Verses one. On to verse 10. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself will I not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me to be. Or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. The sin I personally believe that Paul struggled with the most was pride. I struggle with pride to this very day. And the Lord really whoops me for it when my pride gets the better of me. When I allow my pride to get the better of me. Okay? For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. There are those out there who call themselves of the Church of the Living God but are mere Christians, okay? Who only pay anything of an attention or love or sorrow or contrition onto our Lord because it, advantage, it, it advantages them in some aspect. But if they lose everything, how are you going to react? Well, yeah, hey, I lost everything, but whoo, I'm still alive, boy. Yeah? What happens when you lose everything? And then something happens to your health. 
especially if you're one of these who are going to take that vaccine, you get sick, what happens? How are you going to respond? How are you going to react? You see, brethren, the rubber is hitting the road. Absolute suffering reveals, and absolute suffering reveals, absolutely. How a man is in his suffering speaks more of who they actually are than the facade that so many of them put up. Remember, absolute suffering reveals, and absolute suffering reveals absolutely. But brethren, hold up. Hold on. I have recommended this book unto you before, and I'm going to recommend it again. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Um, it would do you well to read this book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. It would do you well. It's not necessary, but it would help you quite a bit for a perspective, brethren, for a proper and appropriate perspective. As I have said before, I truly do hope that the catching away happens this spring. I truly do hope that. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, I do know of brethren out there who will be devastated by that. Heartbroken. <laughs> As will a lot of us be. But if we do not get resurrected, call, uh, caught up this year, this spring, we're going to go through some stuff. Absolutely. And see... It's easy for someone to, oh, praise Lord, when everything is going well with them. It's also easy for someone, they have lost everything. So, oh, I, I, I've lost everything. I don't have anything. But hey, praise the Lord, I'm still alive. And your health goes. Again. Absolute suffering reveals, and absolute suffering reveals absolutely. What kind of man are you? Will be demonstrated by how you handle the sufferings that are coming. See, there's so many of, the, of you out there who talk really big, don't you? What happens when they come for you? What, ha what happens when it comes to you? Hmm? What happens? Time will tell. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Yet I will maintain mine own ways before him. What does that mean? That's, that you're not following your own made-up, concocted ways. No, 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 brethren, sisters. No. What does that mean? All hell might be breaking loose out there. Continue to walk according to the scriptures. This is our standard. This is what we adhere our lives to and around. The scriptures. The scriptures change us. We don't change them. And again, brethren, read this book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. It would be well worth your time. It would be well worth your time to read Fox's Book of Martyrs, to remember what they went through before us. 
what hellish nightmares they went through when Rome was openly in authority. And that's coming. So, how are you going to handle it? How are you going to handle losing everything if you do? And if you lose everything, what happens if your health goes away from you? How readily are you going to praise the Lord when you lose everything, huh? Or are you going to be as Job? Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return th thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, Job sinned not with his lips, nor charged God foolishly. You know, brethren, with the times coming upon us rapidly, I believe rapidly, I mean, look at Smoking Job. This guy is uh, signing executive order, executive order, executive order, uh -huh. going in all kinds of directions. And as I have shared with a brother, I do believe that that is something that is part of the shtick that he's going to be adhering to, that he's going to just go all nutty and, and woo crazy with these things, and it's going to get out of hand. That's what I personally believe that they're going to use against Smoking Joe to get him out of there so they can elevate Kamala Harris. That's my own personal opinion. So, Absolute suffering reveals. And absolute suffering reveals absolutely. You want to see the measure of those who are truly of the Church of the Living God How do they handle suffering? You want to see the measure of a Christian? How do they handle their suffering? How do you handle it? Think about that. Let that roll around in your head for a little bit. And continue, brethren, every single day. Examine yourself according to the scriptures. Please. So this is going to be it for this video. Might have another one today, I might not. Just wanted to share this little thing with you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.